Hello and welcome here to a new tutorial. So in today's tutorial we are talking about masks and I think masks are one of the most important things you need to know as a texture artist. Of course, besides of how to create photorealistic textures and how the nature behaves and all these kind of fancy things, but to make all these kind of fancy things you need to know how to make masks. And I'm using Mari here in this tutorial, but I think some of the techniques you can also use in Substance Painter and maybe it's worth to watch the tutorial still and get an idea of how you can utilize some techniques to create cool looking masks. And before we jump into it, I want to say a special thank you to Stu Ansley and to Jens because um, I got feedback from, from my last tutorial I did and how you can create on different ways some, some masks in Mari and this brought up the idea on my end to maybe make a whole video about how to make masks in a lot of different ways and also some cool little tips and tricks about masking so stay here and enjoy the tutorial so we are here in Mari and I have here a very nice model from an artist called Andrea Pananero so he's actually a modeler and he gave me this cool um, avatar mech model so I can use it. I will put the link into the video description of course. So let's start here on our to-do list. i uh, show you here what I have. For example here just a tile ball. Let's hear this texture. can quickly bring it here into it. It's from textures.com. It's the same we used on the last tutorial and I tile it here a bit and that's it. From here on, we can actually split the different, the different color values, the R, G, and B. And this will give us slightly different, different values we can use to make masks. So let's first view here the R, for example. Now we can see this is just the, the red value of the texture. And then of course we have the green one and we have the blue one. So if we feed them into a levels node, we can actually grade them and we will get slightly different results of them. And that's actually pretty nice. So we can view them quickly. So I've just made here some basic adjustments, nothing crazy. I just crunched a bit the blacks and adjusted here a bit the mid value. And this way we can isolate some certain kind of parts from the texture. You can also use the shuffle node here and just shuffle the channels you want. For example, if you set everything to R, then you will get only the red channel. This is option number one, where you can split out the different color values out of a texture. So the next version is, again, we have here just the same texture and we go into the luminosity node, which is just a simple node, which is just giving us the luminosity values of the texture itself and then for example we have a brightness lookup which is the same like a curves node in photoshop we can actually grade our mask to what we want so we also have here the saturation node where we can just bring down the saturation to zero this will give us the same result as the luminosity node fairly straightforward that's what i've used for example in the previous tutorial and we also have here, it's again, the same texture, the desaturate node. And I guess this is from the extension pack. To be honest, I lost a bit track of which nodes of, of, of all my stuff is from the extension pack and which are native Mari. I anyway think extension pack is a bit of a need in, in Mari. I mean, don't get me wrong. Look, Mari Mar is super strong these days. Also with features, you have a lot of things, but extension pack is just pushing it to another to another level and i highly recommend getting the extension pack for it so if you're learning mari then of course it's probably not a must but if you want to use it a bit more serious then um, i recommend get the extension pack it's nice so yeah back to topic here we have to desaturate now this is kind of like a luminosity node but it gives us different different kind of um ways to, to give us the luminosity of the texture so we can actually view it. I think it's, then it makes, makes more sense. So we have it here in the minimum, we can also give us the maximum. 
or half, whatever. So I have it here to, I guess, maximum or minimum, I forgot. And then just bring it into a levels node again and crush the hell out of it. No, don't crush the hell out of it. Just tweak it to get the mask values you want. Okay, the next one is a pretty cool one, actually. And this is one that actually, actually, Jens, um, Jens said me you can use as well. I completely forgot about this node. I know the nodes to use it to create from color ID, maps, some isolation maps, but I didn't thought about it to actually use it as well to create some, some masks out of texture. So as you can see, I have here another texture loaded that we not only see all the time the same texture. And what this node is actually doing, we can pick a color value and it creates us a mask out of it. So let's bring it here back to default and I show you. So make sure if you view here in, in your raw, then turn here raw as well. And in the color picker, pick raw pixels. And then we can go here for the eyedropper. Oh, I forgot one thing. So that's how it is on default. So it's just showing us the texture. And then we can go in here and then we can drag here. No, not drag. I mean, we, we can we can pick here a color value. For example, here this orange rust leak. And now everything which is white is within that range. So what we can do is show background turn off. Then we also can tweak here a bit. We can we can tweak here the mask. And this is super handy, super cool, pretty nice. You can also pick here up to four colors and merge them kind of together. There's also a version of this node where you have eight of them. So it's pretty decent node, I would say. But this is from the extension pack. I can tell you this is from extension pack. There is also a Mari native one, which is the color to mask. It's actually doing a bit kind of the same, but in a not so cool way to handle it. For example, look, if you, if you view the node it's just black, so you kind of have to view here the texture and then you can go here into this guy and then select here the value you want and then actually view the nodes. It's just a bit less sexy as here the color to range node where you can view the node and actually view the texture behind. All right, let's move further to not bother you here for too long. The next one is a pretty cool one. So we have here a uh, simple cloud noise and with a vela, with a vela, <laughs> with a levels node, we just give here a bit more contrast. And now look at that. Boom, that's so nice. What I'm actually doing here is I'm grabbing a certain, a certain value of, of the transition of the transition area on, on the noise itself. So since the noise has a soft fall off, I'm grabbing it here and can use it as a mask. This can be, for example, used to create from color chips, the edges which are slightly more elevated, or you can actually create some, some magic effects and whatever you want. It's actually a pretty nice technique and I use it I would say frequently, so it's it's a cool technique. And look here, if we change the values, it will also change here what, what you will get. It's actually a pretty nice technique. All right, so we also have here, again, uh, uh, cloud noise, and then we have the histogram scan. As far as I know, it's from the extension pack as well. What the histogram scan is actually doing with the position, we are actually, we are actually, um, tell the node, hey, which color value do you pick to alter? So here we have the position of 0 to 5, that means a mid gray will be picked. And then we have the contrast, the contest contrast bracket, and it will contrast up everything which is at midpoint of um, midpoint, which is at 0 0.5. So if we change that, you can see we, we crunch now the values at seven to five. So this is actually a cool node as well to create some cool patterns or um, to crunch your masks. This also works here with textures, of course. So we're using here the desert ray, just a different different version of it here, it's the half. Then we can view that. So you can see, you can kind of isolate some certain spots 
and if we change that here we'll, we'll get some 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 different ones so it's pretty nice it's actually pretty nice so as you can see look we, we just crush out the rest of it to get a certain certain value of detection this could be for example a nice breakup mask for adding some some cool looking details on your surface where you get a bit of, of dirt or whatever so yeah next one we have here simple directional gradient nothing fancy and we have here a grunge texture and this two goes together as overlay so the overlay is actually doing or is actually working in in values between zero and one so it will affect it there and then for example with the levels node we can crunch here the values again to a point where we say hey we like it then we have a cool transition mask i mean look at that now we can now we can change here the start and end and look it's following it it's so nice right look at that it's automatically applying whatever is happening here from the texture super handy all right this one is a cool one all of them are cool i say that on every <laughs> every one i'm showing here to you but so we have here uh we have here an asset which has a lot of udims so we can actually create live a uh, random id per udim with this node it's just picking it up and gives a different value to it and then with the color range to mask that's what i told you about how you can pick certain certain points of it so let's go here back to default so you can you can actually see what i mean so turn on here the view background and let's say i want to have just um let's pick here everything which is about like that press ok show background turn off and now it kind of has a certain threshold everything which is within that threshold it will put it into into the mask itself and we can crunch that look now it's really just that color value now we say okay it's it's okay to just include a bit more of, of color values and this is pretty handy when you want to bring in for example some slight color offsets on um, on your panels on some spaceships for example or even on, on such a mac so this is very helpful very very helpful all right next one let's see what santa has prepared here for us again this is just the texture and then we can go for the desaturate and here is this time the minimum and what you can do on this stage is or on, the, on this technique you can fine tweak fine grade some certain values let's say here we we pick up here these values and then we can actually view what, what we have here so we, here we have slightly different values and then we can combine them together so this way i would say you will be able to to get a very accurate detailed mask if, if you need that you can actually you can you can bring together some some more details we can actually look this is this is how it looks like with with just one of them and if we crunch that then we just get these values and then we actually can can bring in a few more details so this can be handy as well okay now let's get to the big boys they are super easy no worries so we have here again just our good old friend of oh no look it's a, it's a new one we have a new friend nice so yeah this is just a breakup texture here i have so this is just a cool one i have from i guess sec boxels texture pack i can link it into the video description as well then we have here this node uh we have it twice so this is just a noise selector i guess it's from extension pack as well where you have a drop down for different noise types it's super handy and then i've just changed here with the frequency and with the levels i think i'm writing a bit more contrast yeah here and here as well so here it's a bit broader the other one is a bit smaller and then here i guess it's just multiplied together so we get a more interesting pattern and then we multiplied it here as well and it will give us something like that which is looking terrible and then we go here into the last levels node where we crunch it a bit more and look at that nice i would say almost organic photorealistic distribution of, of 
details of breakups. This could be a good good uh, mask for for some for some mud splashes or for some mud dirt. Imagine this mech is walking through the jungle and then he stamps into into a puddle and then it's um, splashing here up to his cabin and somewhere else. So this could be a cool mask for that. And here I'm just using multiplies where we kind of just stamp out some some details. And the cool thing is we can actually change here this this values and we get different distributions. Actually, multiply is a very very um, powerful blending mode which you will use very often in your text journey. Okay, that's all cool, but let's say we want to combine some of the textures here or some of the masks we created here to two to, to masks together. This is super easy. So to show you, we have here now our new good friend and we crunch here the hell out of it to get just some of small details here. And then we have here another texture. I mean, it's no, we can call this one good old friend. And here, desaturate again, it's this time on luminance, CC, IR, 601, whatever. And then we go into the levels, crunch the hell out of it. So we have two tiny details we want to bring together. And for this one, I'm using here the merge node and set it to screen. What the screen is doing, it just get rid of all the blacks. You can view it and look at that. It's so cool. Let's say maybe oh, one of the details is a bit too strong. We can just dial it back here in the opacity amount. Super strong as well. So this is, I, I think multiply, overlay and screen are one of the most used blend modes you will use as a texture artist. So better get familiar with them. And we have the last one. And this is a hell of one of a cool one. So we have here the surface normal. It looks pretty funky, just as we would expect how normals would look like. So the normals, the surface normal is telling us where the surface normals are. Yeah. So whatever is green will point upwards. Whatever is red will point here towards the red. And the right one, blue is left. And I guess it, oh, it's nothing on the other side. Interesting. What we can do is now. We can shuffle out just the green, as you can see here, it's just a GGG, GG bro. And we have, after that, just all the top, top facing parts of our mesh. Then we have here a simple cloud, and then we overlay that. Now we can see here already a bit of breakup. And then with the levels node here, we can actually change it a bit more to something we would like and what could this be for example snow or dust everything that is kind of settled down from top down so this is very nice actually and yeah you can break it up with more textures with more procedurals like like noises and create some cool masks as well so yeah as you can see we have a bunch of techniques and i'm sure these are not all possible workflows or techniques to create masks so if you maybe know one which i haven't mentioned here or whatever um let them know let, let them let us all know in the comments and drop them there and this is how we can collaborate with each other and share knowledge and create stunning looking textures together so i really hope you enjoyed this video and you maybe get here and there some cool inputs how you can create some fancy masks for fancy texture on some fancy projects. So happy texturing and we see you next time. Bye bye guys.